What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What's good? Welcome into the FF Dynasty's super terrific happy hour, or I guess fantasy hour in this regard. A uh, little ode to Seinfeld and why not? It's in it's in season. We're going with the super terrific happy fantasy hour or whatever. Or whatever. <laughs> what's, what's up, fellas? How you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm a little upset about a bad debate episode I had last night, but recovering yeah. working through it let's go america let's, let's get our act together here <laughs> america let's go <laughs> america, america let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we can make a fourth quarter comeback oh jesus america welcome <laughs> <laughs> gotta make some second half adjustments for sure we need to just cancel the season and start yeah. over <laughs> yeah. what we need to do <laughs> anyhow we don't have enough time for all that. Yeah. Uh, we got Jay Wayne. Jay Wayne, hello. How are you? Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. Terrific. <laughs> uh, Big Co, how you doing? Even though I know nobody shows up to your rallies. I don't have rallies. No rallies. No rallies needed. I own the rallies. <laughs> I have a rally with an hour's 35,000 people. <laughs> you have, have a, a mask rally. right here. Nobody shows up. You're number two. <laughs> I'm number one. Would you shut right. up, man? <laughs> Speaking of number two, everybody who drafted Joe Mixon right now would like to take a big number two on that draft pick. Um, strong transition. I've, we've been we've been pretty strong, or at least I've been pretty strong on Joe Mixon. I think there's so much talent there. Uh, as you get to the end of these first rounds and start up dynasty drafts, um, he becomes the guy that I'm typically uh, targeting if he's around. Like I said, there's there's a ton of talent there. Last year, we kind of saw a similar thing to this year where up until week, I don't know, six or seven maybe, he was RB in the 30s and then finished the season uh, RB5 um, from there on out. So we know what he can do. Um, it's just a matter of getting him on the field, getting the usage right. And we know the Bengals are terrible. If he drafted him in redraft this year – you know, there's really probably not too much you can do about it. You could probably trade him for somebody who, you know, got drafted a lot later and is is also maybe struggling, maybe he scored a couple more points. But for the most part, like, Joe Mixon's ceiling is going to be unmatched by anybody that you would probably be picking up in a redraft swap here uh, for the most part. And I I'm assuming the floor will come up this week. Um, you saw a snap percentage go up from 59, 55 to 72% this week, which didn't obviously equate in fantasy points. He's, he's only averaging 9.1 points per game. Um, but it was nice to see that uh, percentage going up. Uh, the, the Bengals, what could really help them out is if you got a couple more targets in the past game, which, which, which was huge um, in his success at the end of last season. Um, the Bengals are 10th in targeting running back at 24 total early in the season, so we'll see how that goes. Geo saw 50, has seen 15 and Mixon seen nine. Like to see that reversed. Um, and, and then even maybe a couple clicks higher in the Mixon range. The only thing I can come up with is, you know, we, we've talked about it and, uh, you know, uh, the coaches from the Shanahan, uh, what, what's homeboy Tree. in LA's name? Uh, McVay. McVay. McVay, uh, Tree, he's been around both of those guys. He's seen running backs kind of burn out, and the Bengals just aren't any goods, and they just paid Mixon. So maybe they're just trying to middle this thing until they get it going and not just run Mixon into the ground is really the only thing I can come up with. But uh, wh what are your guys' general thoughts on uh, Mixon? I will say before – in these last three games um, – the Bengals have faced the number five, number nine, and number 11 uh, defenses in yards allowed per game, uh, rushing yards allowed per game. And then according to Yahoo, um, the three matchups, Cleveland's given up the eighth fewest points for running backs. Philly's given up the 10th fewest points, and the Chargers have given up the fourth fewest points for running backs. Now, it's only three weeks in, so that's not a huge barometer of what's going on. But those were decent defenses allowing, you know, decent fronts. Um <clears throat> So it's you know that's at least a little encouraging that those those are some okay defenses and okay defensive fronts 
that they've seen to start off with. And we know this line is bad. They, they tried to spend a little something on it last year. And uh, that player uh, got hurt. Jonah, Jonah Williams, I believe, um, got injured. So it's kind of his rookie season. And we, we talked about Michael Jordan last season and he's, he's coming in. And so they have some youth and they need to get better on the offensive line. They got a rookie quarterback who's showing a ton of grit out there. Um, and, sh- and showing everything you want to see from him, just getting slapped week in, week out, and just coming back for more and more and more. Um, but but really showing um, everything you want to see out of a rookie quarterback. So Joe M- Mixon's future should be bright. He's paid, but right now you're just going to have to kind of bear bear with it. Um, I, it's a maybe a good buy low window for Joe Mixon here um, if you can afford to do it because I know we talk about all the time. Patience is not a strong attribute of most dynasty players. So with that in mind, thoughts, gentlemen. Yeah, I think it's a definite buy low. I mean, you can't sell them. You got to hold. And if you can buy, that's great. If you know, redraft, I don't think we were quite as high on taking him. You know, obviously he's a running back and you'd think the volume would be there, which it, it pretty much has, you know, he's had 19, 16 and 17 rushing attempts. Uh, but this team is just, not very good. Uh, the offense is super young. The coach is young. The quarterback is brand new. The, the whole offensive line, for the most part, is, is really young. They got a bunch of young receivers to throw out there with A.J. Green. And, you know, it's just going to take a minute for them. And, and, and the fact that he got paid was awesome, you know. And, and, and that was part of the reason why we kind of backed off a little bit in, in redraft was because he got paid late and you weren't even sure if he was going to hold out. And that was something that, that would, might make you weary and back off a little bit anyway or make you take maybe a few wide receivers in that late first round area instead of him. But in Dynasty, the fact that he got paid – I, the, the fact that Joe Burrow does look like an NFL quarterback out there, he's improving every game, and you know, I, you'd love to see some more targets, but they're not they're not coming that way. And like you said, no reason to run him into the ground right now. They're uh, they're not a great team, so I think you just got to wait it out in Dynasty and yeah. definitely a buy low period. And it's not a, it's not a lack of talent for for Joe Mixon. It's not a lack of effort. He's making plenty of guys miss behind the line of scrimmage. Um, he looks really, really good out there doing what he's doing, but he's, he can't dodge right. 50 dudes every right. time. And, and he's uh, electric, so if he could get a little sliver of space that he didn't have to work really hard on his own to create, he could bust some really long runs off. I mean, this dude is an electric, freaky, deaky athlete that he could get loose out there. He just haven't seen it. And so patience is not a virtue of most dynasty owners. You agree, Big Co? Go go buy some Joe Mixon if you can. What, what do you think, Big Co? Panicking, out on Mixon, in on Mixon, general thoughts? I think it'll be probably uh, 50-50 across your leagues to find somebody who is panicking. Um, I, this is, uh, I agree, completely a good, good a buy low window uh, as far as like uh, you both mentioned for redraft. I mean, it's a struggle because, you know, the Chargers, uh, the Browns, and the Eagles, their strength, like, they're the best part of their defense is their fronts. Um, they do get Jacksonville, but then after that, they get Baltimore and they get the Colts. So those are not, you know, those are two good defenses. And then they get the Browns again. Um, and so your first really good glimpse is is Tennessee Titans, who not are not nearly as good as we thought they were going to be on defense. And then there's a bye, and they play Pittsburgh, and then the Redskins. So it's like six out of the next eight games is really good, decent defenses, you know, against the run, um, and some of them really good against the run. So it's it's I don't think. I think it's in necessarily any better looking days ahead for uh, the redraft scenario, um, unless they just start like unless they just start peppering him with targets, and it just doesn't seem to be in the plans right now. Um, so I think you stretch this thing out a little bit longer. Um, I I don't think you shouldn't wait to make some type of decent offer for him in Dynasty because you don't want to be sitting there and watching uh, get that email and trade, trade. you know, this trade has happened and then see him go cheaper than you thought, like, oh, I would have paid that or I would have given a little bit more for that. So you yeah. want to at least start the conversation with Joe Mixon owner in your league because you don't want to get that email that the trade has already been accepted. Um, and if the, if the dude doesn't want to bite, that's fine. You just, you nibbled and just say, okay, let's stay in contact or something, you know? And then, you know, I've, I've got, I'm in one league right now. I'm trying to stay in contact with a dude about Kelsey who just lost Saquon. Um, 
And so I just was saying, you know, hey, just get the get get a little nibble going with the guy, and then just understand that, if, especially if he doesn't blow up against Jacksonville and kind of reconfirm some of that. Exactly, that's um, what I was going to follow love. up with. If, if he doesn't blow up, blow up against Jacksonville, then you got Baltimore, and the Colts' defense has been really good. So there's another couple of rough games there. Um, so the window is maybe. It's not maybe it's not wide open, but maybe it continues to grow a little bit in the next couple of weeks, and then you could get get somebody a little bit more nervous. Yeah, you're, somebody's somebody's some like you said. I don't know what the exact percentage is, but there's a percentage of owners who are mad right now at Joe Mixon because he's only getting a max amount of points a game and costing them games. Um, so there's probably a decent opportunity to buy on some of those, but I like it. Like you. Throw it out there, cast the net, see if see if somebody is willing to negotiate and get rid of Joe Mixon uh, right now because this is a quality player. I, I'm not necessarily panicking. If you're trying to win now, um, probably not the best play, but we have seen it turn around at the end of last season. They kind of just started, you know, letting him do his thing and chucking it to him uh, yeah, I mean, a little more. And this it. offense is going to grow as the season goes on. You know he can do it. It's not like you said from last week's from week 14 and on. He was RB5. You know, seven. it's like second, Week exactly. seven so the second half of the season, not the last yeah. quarter of the season. So you've seen him do it for a half a season, get the usage. And they were a bad team then too. So it's not necessarily just because mm-hmm. they're a bad team right now. It's just that the prime spots, the good, the, the two-minute drills, Geo. Third mm-hmm. longs, Geo. And it's just like, it's just that they're – they're taking Get you them out some the garbage, time, a garbage you know? catch and some garbage yards, like you said on those third. It just piles up. Or, yeah. You got it. You got to be that guy in the in there at the two minute drill if you're not getting 25 carries a game, um, and a good you know, and and a team that's good enough to get to the one. Which I mean, like you said, Joe Burrow's been really good. But before we move on, let me hammer this home to our our people real quick. The Saquon Barkley owner in one of my leagues, I I have a good rapport with the guy. I didn't email him. 20 minutes after Saquon's knee went out, you know, I waited a full week and said the next week came around and I shot him an email and I said, Hey bud, sorry about Saquon problem. It's a kick in the pants. I have been a couple of leagues. I, you know, sucks. If you decide you're going to, you know, do something for the future, let me know if you want to trade Kelsey, hit me up before you let anybody you know, before you trade him to anybody else. That's all I said. Just say, Hey, let me know before he let get that. Cause I don't want to get that. I don't want to see that email that he said he traded Kelsey in for a bunch of young dudes and be like, well, shit, I would have given him something better than that. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. Just in, in reference to getting to, throwing the little to, net out to the there Joe Mixon, to, yeah. to the Joe Mixon net. And right. also, you know, that's the kind of somebody it's, you know, that's kind of head games you got to play. I agree. All right. Well, let's move on to the next item on the list here. Uh, we're going to go with uh, what, how do you feel about uh, masks and COVID? No, that's, that was, this. no, we're going with football. Um, they're done with the debate. Uh, we're going to go with Carson Wentz here. Um who this was playing a, almost as bad as that debate was. Like. Yeah, <laughs> this was a guy who in super flex leagues and regular leagues, like I was pretty bullish on um, just because he was kind of always being the last guy on like what I consider the tier break of quarterbacks. Um, and, I, and we have seen some really good play out of Carson Wentz. Um, but I want to just touch on a little something of maybe the psychology of part of what we saw Wentz be so good last year with nothing. Like at the end of last year, like had the team on his back and basically, you know, they were just playing with a bunch of nobodies, which they're not that different currently. And he's really struggling, but we go over to let's see what you guys think about this. We go over to the Packers and Aaron Rodgers, and, you know, a lot to do about them boys drafting Jordan love this year and how, how terrible of a draft pick it was, and they should have got a skill position player. And I don't argue with that necessarily, but you know, there's a lot of being made now of like maybe Jordan Love was the best pick the Packers could have made, and he should be up for the running for MVP. Because he, if, if this would have took to get Aaron Rodgers to play at the level that he's playing at. Worth a first you know, rounder. Right. Um, and some people will say, well, then you're implying that Aaron Rodgers, you know, wasn't trying as hard as he could to do everything he can to win, which, you know, I'm not, I don't disagree with that logic for the most part, but if you're going to tell me you're going to bring somebody in at my profession 
who you, you think is going to be replacing me or can do my job. Like I'm going to go in there and work my ass off. Even if I have been really good and prepare, like there's just an extra fire that's going to be burning inside of me to be like, nah, like fuck that shit. Like I'm the man I'm coming in here. I'm going to show you how to work. Like watch this shit. Um, and just a little extra motivation like that. And you know, I know some people think it's silly, like saying, well, why, you think Aaron Rodgers isn't trying this hard? No, but I think Aaron Rodgers is, is the type of cat where if you, push him like that and say, Hey, we got somebody behind you here, bud. Like there's a fire lit in them. Um, so flip to the other side of that and the Eagles go ahead and draft a guy in the second round and maybe Carson Wentz isn't necessarily built for that. And maybe that's got him a little rattled this year. What, what do you guys think about that? Cause I've, I definitely hated on the, not necessarily the pick because Wentz has been banged up and I understand it, but along the same lines is the Eagles could really use another player besides Jalen Hurts right now in their fucking lineup. Um, whereas, you know, the Packers just needed another year in the system and it looks like Lazard and MVS and those guys are starting to come around a little bit and Aaron's having fun and, and got a hold of the system a little bit more. Whereas we know that Wentz and uh, Peterson have been together and all of a sudden, you know, Wentz just looks out of source, and I don't. I don't think that the answer at all is putting in uh, Jalen Hurts. Uh, I don't nah, think he's ready. But um, the fact that the reporters are already asking the head coach well, about that is and terrible. This is, and, and again, it's also Philly. Like I grew up around the area. There, I'm not. I'm the most anti Philadelphia fan in the universe because I grew up around them all, and they're the worst sports fans. Like, and I'm not saying all of them. There are plenty knowledgeable, really smart Philly guys, but in general, and I think fan bases in general can be this way but I was just surrounded a lot and it's just like anytime some dude is is not playing well even though he's done a bunch for you guys like it's or for the Eagles it's always just like ah he's a bum get him out of here he's terrible he's the worst like they're like impatient I'm, dynasty owners right so what are, what are your thoughts on any of that like I you know let me let me jump in here psychology? real quick before you take it over big co um uh, you made the statement about maybe Carson Wentz isn't dealing well with the pressure of having a, a early round quarterback drafted ahead of him. I, I don't know if that's the pressure that he's having the most trouble with, as opposed to like the actual defensive uh, line pressure that, that is being created in his face. Sure, I mean there's um, a lot more but, to it. I right, just thought it was interesting right? parallel. But but it brings up the point of of how decimated not only this whole team is with injuries but specifically the offensive line even before the season started. I mean they lost uh they lost their left tackle. They lost two guards, Brandon Brooks and uh I'm not sure how to say that dude's name, Suamato, but he he uh you know, these are guys really good players that played for them last year and then all of a sudden they're without these dudes. And then you got old man Jason Peters having to swing. Well, they back. lost. They lost. Uh, they lost the guy from Boston College, Dillard, as well. In right. camp. Yep. Yep. The tackle that was an early round pick of theirs, I believe. And, um, you know, they, they did at least give him a first round wide receiver. Then they went quarterback in the second round. But I don't know. I want to try and make excuses for Carson Wentz, but he's also not making very good throws. Like he's got two picks in every game. And like this last no. game, one of them was tipped, but it was thrown into like triple coverage. It wasn't going to be good even if it wasn't tipped. And then the next throw, the next interception to uh, Ertz was just a bad throw. And yeah, that one was bad. The tip, I'll, you know, I'm never going to give you the tip. But. but but there was like three guys surrounding the dude he was trying to throw it to. And so I, I don't think it was yeah. going to go well. Not that it would have been a pick, but like it just – then there's times where he is dropping a little dime. He, he, he dropped a dime to Ertz for that touchdown. And then he's scrambling pretty well and kind of keeping drives alive and, and scoring touchdowns on on the ground. So he, he's, he's doing a lot – he's doing some – but he's also playing pretty bad. I, I don't know. I'm I'm a, I'm definitely I'm definitely kind of on the side of all these fans just being like, ah, maybe Wentz isn't good because it's like it's always seems like no, it's, it it's, seems it's, like it's been a minute before since he's been like so good, like an MVP candidate. And then he we've dealt, seen he's dealt good with Wentz. Injuries, and now he's playing pretty bad. What what do you think, Big Co? Are you worried about Carson Wentz? I'm worried about the team. I'm worried. Right. I mean, I'm worried about the team folding under the pressure here because you want to be good. They closed the season strong last year. Um, I was listening to the Lefko uh, podcast today, and he's got um, Brian Westbrook on there, and there's not many players, people that are in the media as close to the Eagles as somebody like Westbrook who's going to speak the truth. And he was talking about how um, just between Peterson, the prep for the games, and uh, Carson Wentz, 
just looking like he's not reading the defense out there, just looking like he's surprised every like every time he takes a snap, he's he's guessing at what a defense is doing. And I was at Casey's house on Sunday, and we had three or four TVs going, and I didn't watch every single snap of the Eagles game to break that down. Um, but it, it's you know, a couple of years ago he was an MVP candidate, towards ACL. The team was they're up and down with their weapons they're, they feel like their defense have been hurt for three years in a row now every time you turn around they they had some good linebackers and they started falling down like flies now the offensive line's falling down like flies expectations is what gets the pressure like the eagles are supposed to be an nfc like you're supposed to battle the cowboys for the first spot for the top spot for the playoff spot and it's just now you got people that are close to the team or it's not, you know, I mean, I don't know how close Westbrook is to the team anymore, but he was an icon. I feel, you know, an Eagle sure. icon, basically, you know, when you got somebody like him, who's willing to speak his honest thoughts, his honest opinions, talking, not many people for the last three or four years have had a one bad thing to say about the head coach of the Eagles. And now you got bad Except things. For that saying, visor. Now you got bad things being said about the head coach. Now you got, now you got the quarterback struggling with uh, you, you <laughs> dude, other than, the New York Jets wide receivers, who's got a worse wide receiver group than the Eagles? You know, Nobody. and it's just like, I don't the think, one, you know, and it's just like the, the, you got, you got, you got nobody that you thought was going to be starting on the offensive line anymore. And you got no wide receivers that anybody knows her name of really, obviously the dynasty community, but like a casual fan has no idea who JJ Whiteside is. Or the casual Ward. fan has no idea who Craig Ward is. You know what I mean? Uh, Djax is old. He's still talented, but he's old. And that you brought back, you came into the season with one new player on offense. And yes, Rager is explosive, but you came in with one new player. Like Casey said, the second round draft pick sh- should have done like Denver. Denver stacked it up. Denver mm-hmm. said, we're going to give Drew Locke every opportunity we can to see if he's We're going to go good. play with the offense that's in our division, the Chiefs. And meanwhile, the Cowboys are defying defense and building an offense. It's like, the, it's like the Broncos were like, we're not sure if Locke's any good, so let's give him all the talent we can. And the Eagles are like, we know Wentz is awesome, so we can let him struggle. It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. So I'm worried about the team. Um, I'm not worried about necessarily Wentz's psyche right now. He's a, He doesn't look like – Dar- Darnold, Sam Darnold in a press conference. He's not beat down and kicked in the in the pants. Yeah, um, but it's not good. And and it it it's so bad. It's so crazy. It's so it's so hard to put your finger on it because last year, the last those last couple of games of Wentz in the Eagles, he carried them. He put them on their back with nobody else, and he put, threw it to tight ends and running backs and he just he made any any converted ran around. tight ends converted quarterbacks <laughs> he just he got it done and it's just it's so it's so like you said it's pretty much the same cast of characters they had last year minus the offensive line and and it's 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 ugly yeah it's ugly Wentz definitely has a little bit of a Sam Darnoldish Superman complex where he's always trying to make uh, the biggest play possible instead of sometimes maybe just scrambling a little bit and getting down or throwing it away. He's always he's always trying to make a big play, which doesn't doesn't help him out. And I think again, um, like he's not playing well. We can, however you want to chalk it up. Like you both have yep. said, like you know he's not. He does look a little surprised back there. He he makes some bad decisions, and then he he will have some good plays. And he made you know a good scramble for a touchdown at the end of that game. I believe two tie it up or to yeah i forget exactly how it played out um but you know and i think that needs to be part of his game his scrambling and escapability and and getting yards it needs to be part of the game and they've tried to kind of take some of that out because they didn't want their stud getting hurt um i i don't think there's any i don't think you should ever you know bench your quarterback like that especially for jalen hurts i just i just don't think he's he's ready oh no um no. If you want to, and we like, I can't stand when the saints do this Taysom Hill shit and you just saw it cost them a game. And it's like, dude, stop it with this. Like, I'm so, like, you, you want to try Rager out there or uh hurts out there for a play or two, whatever. But like, I just, I don't like, I don't like that kind of stuff. Like just throw the ball to Kamara, throw the ball to Miles Sanders. Uh Dallas Goddard's now hurt. He's out for a while. It's just like, it keeps going downhill. You can't get Alshon back. Like you said, you didn't do anything to address the offense. And, you know, it is part Wentz. It's part the offense. It's part the offensive line. He's running for his life back there. He is trying to be Superman. So there's lots of parts and pieces. I'm not necessarily worried about Carson Wentz, uh, per se. I think he'll be uh, just fine. Sorry, man. He's still still putting up fantasy points. 
Um, it's ugly, and the team's not doing what they want to do, but he's still putting up fantasy points. So it's a, probably a good – just the narrative around him stinking so bad is a, probably a good buy low in a super flex league. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I mean, as, as far as what you would have had to pay for him a month ago, it's right. definitely cheaper. Yeah, and that's – he was always kind of like the cheaper tier break kind of guy. But So I, he should be – he might even be down a couple of tiers and, and a good buy. So I, I like that. I'm not panicking on Joe Mixon. I'm not really panicking on Carson Wentz. The Eagles – I have heard some other people talking about that are connected around the organization as far as podcasts and media people talking that, you know, there is a little bit of discord in, in the locker room between the coaching staff and people are getting, you know, not, not necessarily buying in like they were bought in. Uh, so – Maybe a little trouble in Philly. Um, I think. I think I agree. I would buy some Wentz. One. One last place. thing before we move on, that gives me a little bit of pause and hesitation and worry with Carson Wentz in regards to comparing him to Sam Darnold, is that that's probably like two of the top guys competing for ugliest quarterback in the NFL. So it's re- it's really hard to win with an ugly quarterback. You know. It is tough to win with an ugly quarterback. Let me say something real quick that, that goes along with what Casey was finishing I up. I think with. Darnold's all right looking. Mm, I don't know about that. Ugliest. I don't know about that. Who's, um, who's, worse, who's worse looking than, <laughs> than those two guys? I don't know. We'd have to have an ugly quarterback draft. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. And this is a year. This, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, and everybody's talked about it at this point good teams being good and bad teams being bad. The Eagles are not a bad team, but with the offensive line injuries, some of them, some of these guys done for the year, not coming back. Um, you get, you get, this is a big time season for distractions. You got probably some people that didn't opt out because they wanted the money, but don't really want to play or don't really want to be running around and jumping up and down and, and, and being, you know, in a gang tackle situation, um, potentially actually some people are worried about the virus out there still while they're on the field or like, ah, oh, this is terrible, but I'm about to get, I'm getting a couple million dollars. I can't sit at home. You know, if you, if things aren't going good, like you said, there's, you know, there's a disconnect in the locker room. If things aren't all in the, all headed in the right direction, the fact, the quickest sport you see it show up in is football, you know, um, if, if those 11 guys out there aren't working their tails off together, the other team's 11, if they are, they get exploited quickly. Um, and then that just that mounts. And like I was talking about the pressure in the locker room, if, if half the team does have to get to a point where half the team's not even interested anymore, it's, it's going to be, it, you're not going to win. Yeah. Luckily the division is might be the worst division in football. So oh, should keep get, the Eagles semi interested. Yeah. yeah. They just very like easy. gained ground with a tie. Um, <laughs> very easy. I, very easy to make the playoffs from here. I think probably Ben Roethlisberger is actually at the top of ugliest quarterback. And then I probably have to throw like Mitch in there as well for, uh, you oh, know, Mitchell with a punchable face. Nick aspect. Foles. Nick Foles is there. Uh, they got, yeah, the, they got, they got, really they got an ugly one too. <laughs> Ritzy Fitzy, not handsome. Eh, but the beard, you know, gives him an edge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's, uh, let's move to the West coast. And uh, let's talk about a little Rams backfield situation. Daryl Henderson, um, who was a guy that Bowling. in every draft that I could do in Dynasty and redraft, I was saying, pick up this guy. He was just kind of one of those you, you, running backs run out early, and then there's a gap, and then there's guys who kind of sit there ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th round. Daryl Henderson was always one of those guys, and I wasn't high on necessarily drafting him where people were drafting him in rookie drafts last year, but again – Dynasty players have no patience and he needed to take his time and learn, learn what to do. And he he's done that. And over the last, in the game against the Eagles, he looked really good. And maybe the stat line wasn't quite where it was and people weren't necessarily paying attention. And then this last game against Buffalo, he looked fantastic. Um, and you know, Malcolm Brown ha- has had spots where he looked good, but I, the, the rookie has not looked good. Cam Akers in limited reps has not looked good. He had a weird off season, um, this seems like a job where they're going to ride the hot guy and, and Henderson uh, coming in here, having, having two good games back to back. He's got 201 rushing yards, 13th in the M- NFL, um, 0.23 missed tackles forced per attempt, which is ninth uh, per PFF, 5.7 yards per carry. That's fifth, 3.1 yards after contact. That's 12th. Um, so he's playing well. The Rams 
absolutely 100% need a run game for this offense to work like it works. All of a sudden, the Rams are back. And you know why it's back? Because the run game's been working. Um, right, Anderson's play been really been good off tackle. Yeah, and they've run all sorts of off tackle. They do a lot of cutting the field in half, making golf make uh, – less reads again golf another guy was dead super flex you could get him for nothing all of a sudden everybody's a little more interested oh golf's pretty decent golf's pretty good last yeah, year he was the worst quarterback bad. ever <laughs> right um so i just we wanted to talk a little daryl henderson here uh, i think there is still potentially a buy window here because everybody is so heavily invested in cam makers and he was going to come in and take that job well daryl henderson they spent some capital on him as well um, really like I said, he pick. took his lumps last year. It was a weird off season, and he looks good. Uh, he it, looks like he knows what he's supposed to do. He looks sturdy. He looks quick. He looks like he's making good decisions. Uh, so I'm, he, I'm really enjoying watching Daryl Henderson. I think he just took that job. Yeah, I don't see how they can go away from him. I mean, he he missed time in the off season too, which put him even more behind the eight ball because it's you know with, with not having the off season, he missed a bunch of training camp, which gave Cam Makers you know, ahead of steam coming into week one and he gets the start. And then, you know, I didn't see that game against the Eagles last week, so I knew we were going to talk about Henderson because it was like two weeks in a row. I even texted you before the game. I was like, man, I'm interested to see what happens with his backfield because Malcolm Brown got the run in week one. Then he kind of got hurt in week two. And Henderson had had a good stat line. I mean, 12 for 120 yards or whatever. Um, 12 for 81 and then two catches for 40 in the game against the Eagles. Right, right, right. Uh, also add in that rushing touchdown. Um, and so I went back and watched him play versus the Eagles in week two, and I had him in a couple of leagues, um, but I didn't start him in week three. And if I'd have gone back and watched that game against the Eagles and seen how good he freaking looked on the field, I would have fired him up week three. Instead, I was a little hesitant because Malcolm Brown, it was just like a pinky issue that got fixed, and he should have been good to go. And I didn't know what they were necessarily going to do with those carries. But, geez, man, this dude looked – phenomenal like he looks you know it, it definitely looked like he was getting yards after contact which your your stat backs up it looked like he was you know playing exactly how is the running back is designed to play in the system you know he's stretching out that zone run and like playing with a little bit of patience and then you can't even mer- maybe see the the whole opening up and he's got that cut back and and he's just making that one cut downhill cut make looking that's so That's exactly good. who he is. Right. And that's what that's what this offense is about and he's look he, he's thick, he's big, he's fast, he looks fluid. He's just his the way his body's moving is just really uh, you know, it's just really attractive to watch. It looks so good and he he's putting a hurting on some people and he looks explosive and it's like I don't I don't see how they could go away from him. And, and, like, I went back and watched some of the week one with Cam Akers, and that man looks – he looks small. He looks like he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't – he did not look good at all. And, I mean, still, he's a rookie. and Take it for what it is. No not, Cam Akers will have plenty of opportunity, but – I believe so, but, I mean – The Rams right, are trying to win right now. Right. They got to keep winning. And, and this dude is playing, and I don't know how you can go away from him. And so, I feel confident firing him up. Um, Maybe there is still some sort of buy window based on the fact that people are still thinking this is guaranteed Cam Akers job. Um, But yeah, well, anybody who hated Daryl Henderson, number one is going to be still hating on him. And anybody who loves Cam Akers is going to be hating on him. So there's, I think there's, and and then a lot that drives as silly as it is, that drives a lot of value in dynasty. Yeah. I mean, you see it in your leagues all the time and it doesn't, I mean, I can just, put myself in anybody's shoes you see trades go down and you're like oh i would have never paid that much or you see a trade and you're like oh i would have paid way more than that you know you have your own opinion about every player and uh, the other uh, members of your league have the same you know they have their own opinion and if you were a daryl henderson guy then you love to see what's happening and if you were a daryl henderson hater you're just sitting there waiting on the reason waiting on cam Akers to take that job you know, or waiting. You're just saying, "Hey, well, last two weeks ago, Malcolm Brown was a way, way better running back. He hurt us. He's, he's he got hurt, and it's a system. And it's, it's, if you're a Daryl Henderson hater, this is Sean McVay. Mm-hmm. You we know? probably don't have Daryl Henderson to buy someone from if they hate Daryl Henderson. You know? Yeah, I mean, they could. It could sometimes you get your hand forced in a rookie draft, and he was going pretty high. And you know, most of us we we were not interested where he was going in the rookie draft because he got his stock got so elevated. But now he's so such a tasty uh, morsel here and the, the, the value dropped and he was just a 
add in every draft auto um, and nobody wanted him because, well, he didn't do anything in his first year. He must be terrible. And they took a second right. round running back. Right, right. Who might have so, been like the second running back off the board. No, no, no. That was Jonathan Taylor. So I think uh, I think there's some window opportunity for Daryl Henderson. And, you know, I maybe Akers eventually takes hold of this job. But I, like I said, there is some fair amount. I think Henderson's a third round pick. So it's not like it's, you know, crazy to think that, you know, it'll probably be a committee at some point. Because, again, they're the team who paid Todd Gurley a bunch of money and, you know, he got a little banged up and injured. And, you know, I think they do want a little bit of a committee approach, but Daryl Henderson looks the part right now and he fits into this offense. He fits into the scheme, like you were saying. Uh, so Daryl Henderson, come on down. Come on down. Come on Keep down. it running. All right. So we are going to move into just talking about a couple of rookies and then we're going to throw a couple of guys out at the end that we're all, some of us are interested in, uh, going to purchase, not going to get too deep into it, but you know, just some names. Uh, so obviously this week, T Higgins and Justin Jefferson have a, uh, coming out party with sprinkling a little eye really making his, uh, First real big appearance here and looking like he's going to fit right in. Uh, but we'll touch Ayuk last here. Higgins, we'll start with him for the Clemson grad in Jay Wayne uh, with a John Ross healthy scratch. Higgins yeah. got the start and ended up with a high, a slightly higher snap count, uh, snap percentage than A.J. Green, 79 to 76%, um, and out-targeted him 16 to 11. Um, and, you know, T looked like he was getting – well, I mean, that backs it up, was getting plenty of looks from Joe Burrow. Um, not to say that it won't go back and forth between him and A.J. Green, but we know A.J. Green wasn't going to be around forever. T was a guy that we all had uh, right outside that second tier of receivers and the second tier being uh, Jefferson, who we'll talk about next. Judy and Reger was in the tier, and then next break, uh, CDB by himself, next break was being uh, T. Higgins to start that one. I'm sorry, did you um, say 16 targets? Uh, yeah, I think so. Last this week, yeah, I'll fact check. Let me, that. I can double check that, or somebody else can double check. I it. got you. I should have been looking. I was just in awe of that number, like sixteen targets. Crown. They throw it a lot. No, it, was, it was nine targets. He, he's got fifteen on the year. Okay, but that's a lot. That 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 snap percentage being more than AJ Green. That I definitely didn't know that. Yeah, um, I've seen I, that too. So it's good to see him on the field. He he off snapped Tyler Boyd too. Yeah, that's a little surprising. Um, didn't really register when John Ross was a healthy healthy scratch. Last week, Auden Tate was a healthy scratch. So they've been they've been testing out who who they want in there, and it, it's like, well, you got to go with T. I don't know that I'm necessarily ready to start him and fire him up yet, but for the dynasty no. stock that I have, super excited. I mean, he was making, you know, he looked like he did in college. You know, he's he's a he's big and he's fast. Like he's not super fast, but he is. He's he's faster on the field in pads than he is in a combine in shorts. And he's he's football fast. And he goes up and makes plays. Um, he did have he did have a, a a bad you know he didn't secure that ball in overtime that would have converted that first down. Um, and that happened a few times in Clemson. That was one of the knocks on him was that you know he really needs to bring that ball in when he catches it, and he'll learn from that. Squeeze it. But the fact that, you know, they got him running on crossers in the end zone, they, they designed that first touchdown pass to go to him um, on kind of like a little delayed route that he ran. And he's just so fast, you can't cover him from side to side and guard the 6'4 body. And so love the fact that he's tied to Joe Burrow for the, for the rest of their career, or for at least the next several years. And uh, things Definitely. are looking up. Great to see. Great to see from T. Higgins. Oh, ye, go Tigers. Yeah, I mean, you obviously can't buy them this week after a two-touchdown performance. But, Never. Never. Nah, but I don't think that necessarily keeps up. Maybe it does, but I think there's, you know, the, give it some time, and if he's not performing well, because, I mean, Tyler Boyd's out there. He's a stud. A.J. Green should theoretically get some more targets, and there's, there's you know, different things going on there, and, and I don't think that this is going to be an every-week occurrence necessarily. But yeah. It, amazing to see it this early and really like if you didn't have t higgins you were kind of wait you didn't want this to happen because there's an opportunity to maybe buy low like a guy mims 
is on the other end of this spectrum, whereas those guys were kind of neck and neck where you would take them in a rookie draft, and Mims has missed this offseason. Everybody hates the Jets, which we'll get to that in the next segment. But, like, Mims is a guy that you could definitely go – by low, but T. Higgins coming out and getting two touchdowns. Like you can't get. There's not a by low opportunity right now, but there definitely could be. Yeah, just gonna forward. just gonna have to wait. Yeah. Um. So that 16 and 11, the 16 with that was target percentage. Um. Mm, T's target percentage, target percentage yeah. was 16 percent, and what percentile? Uh, was AJ Green's was 11 percent. So. <laughs> so um. And then percentile. obviously Justin Jefferson has his huge coming out party and looks Ooh. the part like like we said we had, we had him in the in that second tier again cd being by himself uh we all really love justin jefferson and uh he looked outstanding uh, obviously that's probably not going to be like that every week because they clearly want to run the ball but uh they came out and actually threw it around the yard a little bit and justin jefferson was a looked like a man out there doing his thing yeah, that was incredible, and and I mean, I almost do feel I feel way more comfortable trying to fire up Justin Jefferson next week than I do T. Higgins, um, because he's worked his way up to be that second receiver in that offense, and it's like they're gonna need to throw it. Yeah, they want to run the ball and play defense, but their defense sucks, and they were actually in that game, and they could have won it. And they were playing better by throwing it around a little bit more, but to bust off. 170 something yards is just insane but you just saw everything that you saw from him in college like he looks he looks bigger than 62 like you said Casey he looks long yeah, he looks he's long up there to yeah. make those plays and he's going up in the air and he's making contested catches the same thing you saw from him in college and it's not like he's just lining up in the slot because they're mostly playing two wide receiver sets so he's he's winning on the outside you know and that was one of the questions was like can this man win on the outside and, you know, we had him really high ranked, as you said, in, in rookie drafts. And, like, I had a hard time not putting him at the top of that second tier. And, and there, there was a couple instances where I got on the clock and I had 1-8 or 1-9 and Rager and Jefferson and Judy or, the, or maybe Judy was gone at that point. And I, I, I traded out to 110 knowing the guy wanted Rager so that I could yeah. still get – Jefferson like I, I passed on Rager so I yeah. could still get Jefferson and pick up some equity and like super stoked about that and just to just to see him winning on the outside doing the same things he did in college contested catches after the catch ability just just route running and I mean touchdown dances like it's just it was popping off it was great to see and I'm I'm ready to freaking fire Justin Jefferson up if I have to like yeah I don't I don't know if I'd go that far just because the they need the, him uh, they need the way him. that offense has been run over three weeks I'm gonna I'm gonna need to see a little bit more of how it goes but what more can you well the next get to see? the next three weeks are three of the easiest defenses in the league to go yeah. against um, they got Houston Seattle and Atlanta um, and those so guys can put up points strong. so yeah you got. Yeah, you got offenses that can move the ball and defenses that can't stop you from moving the ball. So, yeah, well, maybe, apparently maybe the Vikings are one of those defenses now that can't stop anybody. So they they're sure. gonna, might have to figure out that they're getting in in uh, shootouts for the most part. So, well, we're gonna have a a, a gambling segment start up for our Patreon members and uh, a little a little uh, peek behind the curtain. Pay attention to how quickly Zimmer potentially gets this defense under wraps like uh you know he's been he's been the best against the spread coach outside of bill belichick for the last x amount of years since he's been the vikings head coach and it's been based on defense and they've had a huge defensive transformation this year in the in the in the wrong direction on the field but they got a lot younger um, so just before you go out there firing off in the next week or two saying the Vikings defense is terrible, let's fade them. If you haven't done that already, it's don't, you don't want to be, that's what, that's how people lose money gambling. You, you can't yeah. be say, all right, well, the bike, the Vikings got the worst defense in the league. That was the first three weeks, you know, yeah. you got, well, they lost this, Anthony Barr this game too, didn't they? Uh, yeah. Is he hurt? Like hurt, hurt. I, mean, I, think, I know he went out, but I don't know if he's hurt, so. hurt. They lost. They lost a couple of uh, big corners, and and Michael Pierce, who was their big acquisition, uh, uh, he opted and they, out. And so they, they do have Ngakoy coming in, right? Ngakwe. But he just got there. What's well, the efforts and Griffin's on the Cowboys? You right. Know, just so a lot of turnover of, there. Tons of defensive turnover. So it'd be interesting. It's just funny, you know. It's like that's that's what the public does. It's like, all right, well, the Vikings' defense is terrible. Let's just see what, how they uh, what happens before you go throwing your wallet the other direction. Well, definitely not trying to start the Vikings defense in fantasy. That's for sure. <laughs> Hell no. Um, so last guy on the list is probably still 
available to buy. And uh, if, especially if you weren't paying attention, because I don't know, there was a whole lot of people watching that Giants uh, <laughs> Niners game there. But Ayuk goes out there and just looks like he's just a match made in heaven for this offense like we suspected, just like we suspected. <laughs> and uh, Debo should be back and Kittle should be back. And I'm I'm actually getting a little kind of excited to see what this offense can look like with all those players active and uh, running around out there and, you know, just handpicked to do exactly what their skill sets do. And we saw how fast Debo came around. I'm expecting a similar thing from IU. And if we could get all those guys on the field, I'm uh, really excited to see Sh- Shanahan doesn't carry, doesn't carry the quarterback is give me Nick Mullins. We're going to throw it all over the damn yard. Yeah. Um, I don't think since the fifties has somebody come off the quarterback, come out like that and thrown for as many yards as he did. Um, so he was Shanahan doesn't care. He's going to get it done with the personnel he's got. And I think there's still a plenty of area to buy uh, Ayuk. And I think the Niners are uh, going to be fine on offense for a while, fantasy wise. So, I mean, it might not be the I, best week. What I could to pick Ayuk to try and buy Ayuk. I mean, he turned eight touches into 101 yards in a touchdown. That's like real damn impressive for 21 PPR points. Um, yeah. Might not be the best week, but. Definitely encouraging to see, and he's, he is what we thought he was, and he fits in just like we thought he would with his offense. And I definitely didn't see that whole game, but from what I did see, it was that he he was getting manufactured touches, um, which that's that's I love to see a good manufactured touch. Like that means you're <laughs> literally trying to get my man an easy an easy uh, uh, a I touch. Love a good manufactured touch. He was yeah. he's that chess piece that you thought that people thought Dante Pettis might be, except he looks like he's for real. So, but the fact that they still don't have Debo coming back and they were without Kittle, maybe there is, you know, maybe that is a, a way. Well, that's that, kind of what I'm saying. Those guys might be coming back this week or next. And then if you didn't watch that game and see how good he looked in his touches, uh, you might just think, ah, oh, he just did that because there wasn't anybody else there. Um, when this is an offense that can easily score 30 some points a game. Well, the, the the Niners as a team to go out and win games and as a team that can put for fantasy points are in the best case scenario is with a capable backup. Mm-hmm. Um, there you couldn't, I mean, I, 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 I didn't think about this before I started talking about it, but I don't know how many teams have a better, more capable backup uh, than Nick Mullins. Obviously the Cowboys have, uh, you know, uh, the Andy red Dalton. rifle, Andy Dalton, but not, you know, and I don't just, know how many you teams. You just saw the Bears, uh, Calling the Foles over there. The Bears went to Foles. The Bears <laughs> went to Foles. Um, but, I mean, Mullins had a full season. Quote, Jimmy G got hurt in game two or three two years ago, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, the Mick, Nick Mullins basically had a full season in, in, with this team and didn't look terrible doing it. He was the talk of the town. Remember the, one of those Monday night games where, like, Nick Mullins was, like, 4-0 or 5-1 and or something like that, you know? Just one of those things where everybody loved him because he was a new thing and everybody – Nobody knew who he was, and he was performing. Um, so that's good for the Niners and good for your fantasy assets on the Niners um, because Jimmy G gets hurt. Nick Mullins comes in, throws the ball all over the place. You love to see that. Yeah. Uh, the Niners have had two straight off seasons where people come knocking for, for Mullins, and they basically have turned everybody down and almost said he's kind of untouchable. So, yeah. They Gave like him. him. the old <laughs> move along. Best. That's the best shoe. You do that. If, anytime you get an opportunity to just shoe someone, it's just the best feeling in the world. It's like the most demeaning thing you could do to someone. Like, can't believe I didn't see it in the debate. Just move along. All right. Well, we got a couple more guys here at the end that we just wanted to throw out and talk about and maybe trying to go purchase. Some of them are rookies. Some of them are other guys. You guys feel free to throw out whoever you'd like. Obviously, we just saw Devin DeVernay do what he could do on a kickoff return. I just don't think it's going to be long until he's going to get his way out onto the field. There's no way you're telling me he's not better than Willie Sneed. Um, he's better than Miles Boykin already. Now, Miles Boykin offers a different body type out there for them. Um, but And, I mean, I'm going to say it. He could be easily better than Hollywood Brown, too, because Hollywood Brown does look very quick. But sometimes he doesn't look like he's really uh, – just really not too about it. Like this last game, he looked like he was kind of scared out there. I don't know what his deal was, but it didn't look great. And I I, I love Devin DeVernay. He's got plenty. He's probably not as fast as Hollywood Brown is, but he's got comparable speed. And uh, I think he, he could be just what the doctor ordered on this offense. So go try to maybe 
Uh, he, he was my favorite third round pickup. He was the guy I was picking up over everybody once we got into the third round. So I think the Ravens need him. I think he's a playmaker. They need more playmakers on offense and somebody that uh, Lamar can hook up with and get yak after the play. Um, and I think, I think Devin's about to earn his way into more and more snaps out there. Uh, any thoughts on that? I uh, look real fast on that on that uh kickoff return. Look real real fast. Obviously, I think you got some time to work on that because until um, Lamar shows willingness to throw to more receivers, right now he's got that slant game to Marquise Brown and the over the top game to Marquise Brown. And when he scrambles around, he seems to find Willie Sneed sometimes. Other than that, his tight ends he doesn't right. check it. He didn't throw it to his running backs enough. He's just not enough pass attempts and quality pass attempts to go around. But um, I think you're right, Devin. It should. It might not be long at all before he is. He could be their best wide receiver. Maybe he's not the best. Maybe maybe Hollywood Brown's a better athlete. But how many times do we talk about better athletes not being the best football players? Yeah, and, and I'm, I mean, I mean I'm not saying Hollywood well, Brown's not awesome either. I mean, also Hollywood Brown, right. 100, 100, 100 yards he's receiving been, two games ago. Sure, Hollywood you know? Brown's been good for the first two games, and I'm not trying to shit on Hollywood Brown by any means. I'm just trying to t- tell you how good I think Devin Devernick is. Yeah, no, I mean. I, Hollywood Brown is next level fast, um, and he has dealt with injuries that might have held him back. But I mean, uh, Devin Duvernay is no slouch. Like he's running a four four. He's super fast. Four three. Four three. Okay. He's he's maybe not quite as fast as Don't go slighting my Hollywood man Brown, but he does have probably like thirty pounds on Hollywood Brown, so that that helps. Um, because my man out there stick up, and he looks like a damn running back, and they will get him some rushing attempts. And they will get him some targets. And it, this is a long play. Like, they have a lot right. of options there. For sure. And, it's like, they still time. have Snead, and they got Boykin and Brown and, and Mark Andrews, and they'll throw it to other tight ends. And Lamar's going to do his thing on the ground and eat up a bunch of, of, of clock and, and attempts. And so this is a more of a long play, but it's definitely encouraging to see him getting some more yeah. action out there and doing something with it. And, uh, most of these guys are a little longer play. There, there are some names that are going to start are starting to be in people's mouths just a little bit, and maybe you could catch it before it's in full blast. Van Jefferson's the next guy, another favorite of ours in the third round this year, um, and he's just it's just buzzing around out there. They can't keep that man off the field, um, and you know the Rams' offense is the Rams' offense and injury, and and Van could be just super relevant and never come back off the field. I know they just paid Cooper Cup and. Bobby Woods, but Van Jefferson, another cheap guy that I'm interested in picking up. Um, and then as to end, round out the rookies here of guys to talk about, um, we, we, you know, tons of different guys to pick up. But Claypool was another guy who I slept on through the draft process. Um, but there's a lot of uh, Steelers coming out and saying how good this guy could be. Steelers coaches, and they don't really have anybody like this guy. He's big and tall. Um, and, and he is just happens to be really fast as being big and tall. And I didn't have a great game this week, but last week was pretty good. Um, so guy probably still pretty available to, to pick up that hasn't blown up who, you know, maybe there's a couple of guys in your league that drafted Claypool with strong conviction, but for the most part, it got to a point where they didn't really know anybody else. And Oh yeah. I, I Google searched Claypool and he was big, fast, big and fast. Uh, yeah. So That's enough for me. Right. Take him. Yeah, good call there, Jay. Uh, Casey, and then what you were saying about uh, Van Jefferson, the Rams with golf coming back and and just re- reviving the confidence that we wanted to have in him this year. The Rams have a plan; they know exactly what they want to do, and they know exactly how they're going to do it. Um, so Cooper Cup's been hurt. Robert Woods, Robert Woods has been very healthy for a long time, but he gets rushing attempts and he gets rushing attempts near the goal line and it's you know he's been very durable but anything goes wrong with one of those two guys and van jefferson could get the the opportunity that he needs you know and it could be you know play style often, wise he seems to fit right in with what those often guys often running do. often running so that's that was a good call there it's like it's still just in, to, in jay's words it could still be a long plan just because they got their two guys they got their two chess pieces at wide receiver with cup and woods but an injury and he plugs into one of those spots they'll they'll move it around and make it happen um i would like to make my player the uh, upcoming Patreon gambling segment for the uh, public that gets to listen to this part. Let me t- just put it just if you if you're not a Patreon and you're not going to get the gambling segment, you need to at least and you don't have and you haven't heard some of the back and forth. You haven't been part of the Patreon before um, us just kicking it with the guys with the pleasure chest. Um, we do talk some gambling, but we're going to we're going to right this minute as we go into week four. 
Um, I said at the top of the Charleston Super Contest, I got 11 points out of 15. Last year, I finished fourth place and got my money back. And the year before that, I finished tied for first. And me and my partner who split the team, got we split $10,000. So just a little bit of credibility. You're like, oh, well, why in the world would I get on Patreon to listen to these guys talk about their gamble picks? Well, <laughs> just a tiny bit of credibility there that right now I'm over 70% this year with my five, pick, five picks a week in the Super Contest. That's how it's laid out. It's just like the um, the two two or three big ones that run out of Vegas. Uh, there's 30, 32 people in it this year. There was 38, 38 last year and 28 the year before. Um, so it's not like I'm playing against seven dudes when I say I won. It's a thousand dollar team, so it's pretty serious, and uh, just just a little credibility there to the uh, Patreon gambling segment. And what basically we're gonna t- we'll talk about it some, but mostly I will just had to post what post what the picks the po- Casey will post the picks that he likes. Uh, Casey's doing a crazy tournament where you have to pick every game by the spread, but he'll just pick the one he'll just post the the ones he feels good enough to actually bet on every the single games that he's gonna bet on during the week. How'd you and, do this um, last week, Case? I went four and zero this past week, and I yeah. Oh, I just went four and zero. I'm not saying that I'm a, any sort of gambling expert, but he's on a heater. Um, I haven't I haven't gambled at all. This is the first time I've actually gambled outside of the picks. Um, but it was just a good, it was a good week. I went pretty square, but sometimes it's hip to be square. And uh, no, it's good. With you know, if you call if you time. call this number right now, we'll give you three <laughs> free picks, and we'll give you the Thursday night lock of the century of the week. And it's guaranteed. Guaranteed. If if you don't get it, if we don't get it right, we'll give you another one. <laughs> uh, all right, couple more guys for for me personally. Mikol Hardman, another guy who was being drafted high in rookie drafts. You know, fizzled out. Not necessarily fizzled out, but definitely you know hasn't been as high as return. And some people, you know, again, patience isn't the uh, best attribute of dynasty people. So Mikol is able to be had in some circles um we just saw last week you know he was just really close to getting two td grabs there um he's really fast um again probably a little bit of a long play but it it's it's he looks like he's starting to develop into an actual receiver instead of just this splash play uh player uh and you know, you're tied to Mahomes. He's there for 10 years. Eventually they're going to lose, you know, Sammy Watkins and or whoever and you know, Travis Kelsey is a super young. I think my they they re-signed him, obviously, but I think Mikol's a good a good long long term play right there. There's just so much juice to be had. And then one more kind of big guy uh who I'd be going after right now is Terry McLaurin. Um he's still playing really well. He's very startable, he's very good in your fantasy lineup, but he's doing it all just on a terrible team with no offensive line, with no other weapons around him. Um, and he just looks like he is bursting at the seams every time he touches the damn ball. Um, so I'd be going, obviously he's a lot higher class than those other guys, but isn't, I don't think he's necessarily like just blowing the radar of everybody up of saying, Hey, uh, look at how good this guy, Terry, you really got to be watching some Redskins football to see him actually yeah. playing and not just be seeing, and nobody wants to do that right now um, yeah. to, to just be seeing the box score that he ends up with. Um, but he's just, He's really fast, and he just he's bursting at the seams every time he gets it. He's open a lot. He could there's he could be fed so much more, and just be just an absolute stud. So I, I would have no problem giving up a, a first for, for Terry McLaurin. Um, yeah. I don't even know if that would get it done, but that that's just kind of I know people like to throw values on it. It'll be different everywhere else, and player wise is different everywhere else. But that's a guy that I that I want to put on my team. I like, I like it. I like could throw it. a couple couple guys in there. Um, everybody on the Jets, you know. <laughs> everybody on the Jets, because once Case <laughs> is out, like I couldn't fire him this week because I had a short week. But next week he's yep. probably fucking gone, <laughs> and right. all the Jets value is going through the goddamn roof. Right, <laughs> Chris Herndon got to get some of that guy. Definitely wants some Denzel Mims. Oh hey, we got our best player who's available. We're just gonna we're just gonna let him block. <laughs> This man's got to go. Le'Veon Bell's targeting a week five return post like, Adam yeah, well, Gase firing. Yeah. Once that full Gase is out, I'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> Crowder's like, ah, hammy. Right. Ah. It's still kind of tight. Hammy's kind of tight. It's not right. It's not right. Better not <laughs> risk it. So I like that. Um, I think uh, maybe a little Evan Ingram. I, I could go buy some, some Evan Ingram a little cheaper because he's still – was coming into this season with some buzz and was one of those probably like a top five, six tight end off the board. 
and uh, he hasn't panned out statistical wise. He had a, a decent amount of targets the first two weeks, and then the Giants just look terrible. So um, it's uh, I just think he's still a really talented guy. At least he looks healthy, and so I could go maybe capitalize on on how poorly his stat line has looked through this this far, and then maybe depending on how this uh, this week goes uh, with DJ Moore, next week we might turn this into a bigger segment, but. I think DJ Moore hasn't hasn't given you what you've been looking for and what you paid for, and maybe some people who are getting a little antsy with DJ Moore and might and might come off great that call a lot easier than than they would have before the season started. Best so. best call maybe on the board here that you just talked about. We did want to dive into him a little more, uh, but just ran out of time uh, with this week. Gotta uh, go to kinda, Home Depot. I don't know. <laughs> Bad Bath Beyond. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have enough time. Uh, you got anybody else? Uh oh oh what do you think about Marvin Jones big coach is that a little is that a nice little buy low opportunity cuz he looks I mean the, the the offense didn't look bad and I mean he's making good plays he's healthy he hasn't quite come through for you statistically and if you're mad at uh, Marvin Jones. This is a text that came through from Big Co on Sunday. If you're mad at Marvin Jones then it must be a real buy low opportunity. Yeah, I'm pretty upset with Marvin Jones. That's my guy. Um, I mean, there's there's no part of me that doesn't think there's a 30 point game coming. Um, that's just how it, we roll. Um, but just the whole the whole Lions team, man. My Lions, they get me. They get me all the time. I finally bet against them this week. Uh, the, I went four and one in the contest this week, and the the Cardinals. I I thought they were going to beat them up, and the Lions won the game, um, but yeah, man, my my Marvin Jones. I'm, it's not like he's killed just, you. He's got nine, he, twelve, and eight. You know, sure, sure. It's it. Yeah, there's no two pointer there, which is fantastic. But I just felt like there'd be more like fourteens. You know, and that's what yeah. I need. That's what I I need, my man. I need my man, especially. I mean, Galladay was hurt first two weeks, and it's just uh, it's just. Yeah, definitely yeah. thought you'd see some bigger weeks those weeks, but maybe he just needs Galladay to take a little pressure off of him. But still wasn't great this week, so I don't know. I'm, I love the Lions. I bet I bet the Lions this week, this past week. I've always needed to connect on your picks, and uh, you could have told me. I, I don't like to bet with or against the Lions. They always get me, no matter what. Even in the three years running of these this contest, I've been running in. Anytime I bet against my Lions, they get me. And anytime I bet for, they just they get me. I I can't get on the right side. I just need to stay away. Yeah, you got yeah. any anybody else out there? I'm all tapped out. I feel like I've been really crushing it this 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 year. So can't go can't go too many. Yeah, well, Hakeem Butler's coming back around, baby. Hakeem's on the Eagles, making little, a little Darren Waller move. Little position change. We talked about it at some point in a Patreon show or somewhere about how Darren Wall, like Hakeem Butler, could just very well be Darren Waller 2.0. Hopefully, without you did the, say that. Hopefully, without all the issues leading up to where he was almost done playing football. You could football. just skip the, uh, you know addiction phase and go straight to sobriety figured it Eagles, out Eagles need somebody and it's apparently JJ Arcega Whiteside isn't getting it done what a maybe joke. he should convert to tight end yeah, yeah them boys were like we're gonna pick up this guy and convert him to tight end even though old J Jaw over here is uh J Jaw love it <laughs> Eagles all right well, anybody got anything else before we get out of here Big Co you good yeah. Fucking Marvin Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Needs All right, guys. Marvin. Well, thanks for joining us for another super terrific fantasy hour. We'll be back next week. Appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Peace.